Okay. Um, yes. So, hello everybody. Thanks, Marco, for the introduction. And also, thanks. I want to thank the organizers for this really nice uh, workshop. So, I'm a postdoc at Chalmers University of Technology in Janine Space Resource Group. And the, one, the work I, I'm going to present is also done with uh, a master's student, Nicola Matteo, who is another postdoc at Chalmers, uh, Robert Whitney here, and Rafael Sanchez in Madrid, and, and Janine. So I come from the quantum thermodynamic community, and as we've seen in some of, of the talks here at this workshop, it's really amazing how like this theory of thermodynamic developed in the 19th century to, to model the thermal machines is still insightful and applicable in some way on really small, now in really small scale devices, like this absorption refrigerator that Amir presented yesterday, or this um, um, thermoelectric engine uh, from Lund University in Sweden. So if you think back about the Industrial Revolution, these steam engines were really a game-changing technology, and it's all about performing some tasks. So for instance, making this train here move forward, and this task obviously requires some energy, and we want to have some readily available resource to, to perform them. And in that case, it's going to be heat that you can get by like burning wood or coal to produce the steam and run these steam engines. But if we think about it, it's still also quite relevant to think about these points also about quantum technology, if we think about quantum computing and so on. Uh, but of course, uh, there are a lot of differences also with uh, 19th century steam engines because as we've seen also in many of the talks, there are now we have to take into account fluctuations, interactions and quantum effects. So this creates a lot of challenges so at the, at the level of the theoretical description, a really fundamental way about defining thermodynamic quantities and so on, which the thermodynamic, quantum thermodynamic community has worked a lot on, but also on like more experimental side, there are a lot of challenges around managing heat uh, in the small scale devices and fighting noise, and which is also quite uh, well known of uh, people also working on quantum computing and so on. But in thermodynamics also heat is not just a problem, it's also a resource. And we've seen also in some of the talks that noise in some ways can be used to improve performances in some cases. So there are also a lot of exciting opportunities to use these effects and new, uh, new resources like information on equilibrium and genuine quantum effects to actually uh, run these thermal machines and also in the context on a more like of this workshop and thinking about more applications how we could use them to make quantum technologies more sustainable so I'm not going to talk about genuine quantum resources uh, as you've seen in other talks like coherence and so on but I'm gonna focus more on information and non equilibrium and uh, it's interesting for the application if we think about, for instance, recycling heat waste on a chip, because most of the processes like quantum computation, gates and so on, they are generating some heat waste that we want to get rid of, but this heat doesn't have a nice thermal distribution and we can also take advantage of these uh, non-thermal fluctuations. So, because I also want to talk about information, I'll start with a brief discussion about Maxwell demons, then I will present the specific setup we are gonna, we, ha we have studied, and finally I looked more into the fluctuations. So, as we've seen, for instance, in, in Masahito Ueda's talk yesterday, that it's possible to use information to extract work, for instance, with this photo experiment from Sillard about this uh, Sillard engine, and what's really interesting is that now we can also, they can be implemented in the lab, like uh, Benjamin Ua explained. And what I want to focus on, not this uh, general Maxwell demons, but more like the autonomous kind, where the demon is actually a small system that can be modeled uh, in the same framework, in the same physical model as the rest of the, of the setup. Like in this experiment, for instance, from Finland, where the demon is this small single electron box. So 
the specific kind of, of daemon I want to look at is one implemented with quantum dots. So if you don't know what a quantum dot is, in that case, I'm looking really at a single energy level coupled to some electronic reservoir. And you can imagine that electrons are just hopping in and out of this, this level here from, from the reservoirs with some tunnel rates. And so here I have two dots. The top one is going to be the demon, and it's coupled to some cold reservoir. And the bottom one is the working substance, and it's coupled to two different reservoirs with different chemical potentials. So what I want to do is to transport electrons against this uh, potential bias to generate electric current. And how is it possible with this setup? It's possible thanks to the Coulomb repulsion between the two dots. So the energy level here will change position depending on the occupation of the other dot because of this Coulomb repulsion. And this is how we can implement this uh, measure measurement and feedback loop that we need in a Maxwell demon. And the final ingredient we need is some energy dependent uh, tunnel barriers to be to control from where from which reservoir the electrons go through the, the device so here in the ideal case we can imagine that you're blocking completely tunneling with the right reservoir at low energy and blocking it completely with the left reservoir at high energy so this is how it works so if we start from a fully empty setup then the demon here is seeing that this one is empty and like the electron can jump from the cold path here into the dot, which lifts the energy level on the bottom dot. So now the electron can only come from the right. And then the demon sees that now there is a, a occupied uh, working substance here and so the energy level is higher and so the electron can escape back into the cold bath. So here the bottom level goes down and the electron can only go out through the left. And then we go back to the initial state. So this is, this is not like an auto cycle or like a deterministic cycle, it's stochastic, but we can tune the parameters to get more often this cycle that's transporting electrons against this potential bias. So of course we need to have the right parameters to achieve this. So we want the demon to measure fast, so we need this tunneling rate between the cold bath and the demon dot to be faster than the transport in the lower dot. We also want to have a good measurement, so basically we need the cold bath to be at zero temperature. And finally, if we want to look only at the information transfer as a resource, then we need uh, the lower dot to be at infinite temperature so that we don't have any average heat flow from the demon to the working substance. So this is quite a, a lot of constraint here. So what we looked at is a slightly more complex system where we can easily meet them on a wider range of parameters. So we have added one more dot here in the demon, which is now coupled to a hot bath. And because of this extra dot, we can easily set this average input heat flow from the top here to the bottom, from, from the demon to the working substance, to zero. So let me describe a bit more precisely this setup. So we have these three capacitively coupled dots, and um, they can be described by this Hamiltonian, and they have couplings between the different. So now we have three different couplings, and we assume that the top coupling, the coupling between the two dots in the demon is so high that there is no, never two electrons there at the same time. And then we have the other two couplings. So now we have three possibilities for the energy level in the bottom dot in the working substance. And uh, now we have four terminals, so one hot, one cold, and the two lower ones. And they are just characterized by some Fermi distribution. And the coupling between the dots and the terminals is weak. So we are really in this not, uh, we don't have any uh, quantum effect like uh, coherences and entanglement, we just have some uh, master equation, which is just rate equations with like uh, transition rates that are just uh, tunnel couplings times some Fermi function. 
And finally, we need also, like previously with the two-dot case, we need this energy-dependent tunnel barriers. So here we have chosen to have no transport uh, with the right side at low energy and to block the tunneling at high energy with the left. So does it work? And the answer is yes. We can set this inpu average input heat flow, like in, in the green line here, to be zero for a wide parameter range of like voltage biases. And we can still have this negative uh, electric current through the demon, through the dots, sorry, through the working substance. And this gives us some generated power. So of course, if the bias is too large, then the interaction is not enough to allow this uh, power generation, so it goes to zero. And on the other hand, on the other side here, when the bias changes sign, then we stop uh, generating power because now the bias and the current go are in the same direction. And finally, if we want to look at the efficiency, then we want, at first, we would define it as the generated power di divided by this heat flow from top to bottom. But of course, here, this J in is zero. So it just gives us infinity, doesn't really characterize what's going on in the system. So we need to use some concept from non-equilibrium physics to look at more this free energy efficiency, which in this case is uh, comparing the entropy production rate in the working substance terminals to the entropy production rate in the demon part. And what we see is that we are well below one, and actually if we wanted to be at one, we would have no power generation at all. So now we've seen that we can generate power without any average heat flow from the demon to the working substance. So how is this compatible with the second law? Because if we look at it a bit directly, we, we see that we have this entropy production in the left terminal here, and then the, the same in the right. So this J is just the heat flow from the terminal into the dot. And that's because it's thermal, thermal baths. But this is negative. So this is this blue curve here. So it seems to be violating the second law because J in is zero. But actually, the top is not a thermal bath. So the entropy production doesn't have this uh, form of inverse temperature time uh, heat flow. On the other hand, we can express it and calculate it. And this is this I dot term here uh, in yellow. And we can see that there is no problem with the second law because it's positive and very large. And we can interpret this term as the information flow from the working substance into the demon. So we are using the information to be able to generate power even in the absence of average energy of particle flow from the demon into the working substance. But we can see here that the maximum of this I dot quantity doesn't coincide with the maximum power. And also, even if this average chain is zero, there are some fluctuations. So we are also wondering about other resources that we could use here, and also uh, about what's the role in particular of the, these fluctuations. So we've seen that we have an autonomous Maxwell demon with some thanks to the interdot Coulomb repulsion, but we also have some non-equilibrium resources here. And that's because we have a hot bath here and a cold bath here. Oop. Oops, sorry. So, and it's been shown in, in of a work from the, from the group that it's possible to generate electric power using purely non-thermal resources and no information at all. So we have a totally non-interacting system. And the reason why is because there is entropy production in the non-equilibrium part, which is large and positive, and so we can use it. Like we were using information in the maxwell demon case to generate work. So here we have a mix of the two effects. And if we look at the power, uh, so we can calculate this power, the fluctuations. And so the first thing I want to say about this is that we have a trade-off because we have some fluctuations in the power output. So if we don't want any fluctuation, a fully reliable engine, then we don't have any power. As you can see here, we don't have any power. And the second thing 
is that we have some finite, so the green curve now, we have some finite correlations between j in and the generated power, even if this j in on average is zero. So this means that there are useful fluctuations in there. And our outlook for this is we want to understand better what are the fundamental bonds associated with these fluctuations. And for instance, you can think about these thermodynamic uncertainty relations or out of equilibrium fluctuation dissipation bonds. And finally, we can also look at fluctuation from a different perspective in the system. So instead of calculating noise on currents, we can also look at these stochastic cycles. So we have electrons jumping in and out of the system. We have many different possible, so I've represented here the many possible configuration of the system. And we can unravel this master equation into some trajectories, stochastic trajectories with jumps. And look at the stochastic thermodynamic quantities like heat, entropy, entropy production, and so on, along those trajectories. And what we want to understand there is how we can quantify the respective role of like, feedback and information at the trajectory level and the role of non-equilibrium. So to conclude, I've presented you a demon based on three quantum dots coupled to different terminals and that can produce electric power without any average ener energy or particle exchanges between the working substance and the demon and the resources there are two kinds of resources used here to make this power generation possible. One is the information that the demon gets on the system, and the second one is the non-equilibrium coming from the mixing of hot and cold resources in the demon. And to, to have a broader outlook on more the <laughs> related to this quantum energy initiative is uh, that this non-equilibrium that we have created here, a bit artificially by mixing some hot and cold, we could also look at it in a wider way as a resource uh, coming from some other process that's creating this, so this non-equilibrium distribution, and that we could reuse it, this wasted it and so on, from other processes on ship to power a useful ma machine and perform some tasks. And for that also, we need to further develop quantifiers to, for these non-thermal resources to understand how performance or not our engine is and how we could optimize it further to, to have more sustainable devices. So with that, I thank you for your attention. And if you know people interested in the subject, there are some open PhD and postdoc position in Janine Group at Chalmers. Thanks. So thank you, Juliette. Uh, is there any question? So maybe uh, I will ask a question. Um, so for, uh, what is the, um, in, in order of magnitude, just to have an idea of the, 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 cur the power you can extract from, from this device? Because, yeah. I, I okay, you can so this is still quite uh, preliminary work right now. And like we have been looking at uh, a dimensionalized quantities. So I don't have like really mm. like experimentally relevant figures about the power. Uh. Okay. But like the, the efficiency wasn't, uh, we have a very large parameter space, so it's kind of hard to really optimize. Uh, so this is not at all optimized, at, uh, but uh, yes, like the, this efficiency is not that high at the moment, for instance. Okay, so for, for f okay, because uh, f for typical parameters, um, yeah, okay. You, it's, it's a work to see uh, for typical experimentally relevant parameters what... Uh, yeah, yeah. We, are, we have not made a connection with experiment yet. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah I really, <coughs> sorry. I really like the, your perspective of like recycling this uh, asomal states. Uh, do you expect like you can do something useful with any asomal state or is it very, like do you need a very specific setup like that? So, uh, like, any, if you have anything here which is non-thermal, you, you will have, even if you don't have any energy flow from this non-equilibrium part to your working substance, you will have some non-zero uh, entropy rate here. 
And that means that in principle you can use that to do something useful. Uh, yeah. But it's like not as simple as just like putting that distribution in the Maxwell's demons position, or is it that simple? Um, ca can can you repeat please? Like, can you just simply put that non-equilibrium distribution in the demons position in your setup, or do you need to find like a uh, setup that can utilize this specific uh, non-equilibrium state? Um, I mean, then the specifics are going to depend on the platform and so on, but I'm not sure I really... You, you can have, like, you, you don't have to know precisely how you create the non-equilibrium, but... Uh, Skill later, maybe. Yeah. Any other question? So, let's thank the speaker again.